hello guys and welcome back to my channel civil construction and tutor and in this video i'll show you how to design a column manually from the result taken from etab so here i'll be using this excel sheet and here we have to input certain data from etabs that is the material properties of column uh, member properties that is the column properties and similarly load data from the etabs in etabs after analysis is complete that is the analysis and the concrete frame design we will get a window like this and we will select one of the column for the design so for now let us select the one of the column here let me select this one and here you can go to details and we will add the data required so basically i have prepared a playlist for the design of the rcc column so you can find all type of column there which i have designed manually and using the concept from that i have prepared this excel sheet and we will design accordingly i'll explain all the formulas and points when i come to that particular points so grade of concrete use here you can find the grade this is 20 similarly grade of steel is 500 and length of column so here you can see 2844.8 mm so 2.85 meter depth of beam so depth of beam will be required for computing the unsupported length here the depth of beam is 350 mm okay effective length factor so you can find this in the result which is k factor that is 0 0.62 and 0 0.62 or as per is 456 table 28 effectively held in position and resistant against rotation in both ends the factor the k factor can be taken as 0.5 for the theoretical and recommended value is 0.65 you can directly put 0.65 but for now we can directly take from here so this shall be as number only so 0.62 and 0.62 for x and y direction unsupported length of the column so this is equal to total length of column minus depth of beam and effective length of column this is equal to multiplication of the length of column into effective length factor in that particular direction so 1.55 and 1.55 for either direction width of column and depth of column so 304.8 304.8 okay clear cover so clear cover is 40 mm for column confinement bar uh, let us take as 10 mm then effective cover will be equal to 40 plus shear bar plus maximum bar size divided by 2 that is the longitudinal bar so this depends upon here in the lower value so i'll show you that later on now axial load of column so firstly we'll design the flexural capacity so axial load is 400 and 68 this is design moment 68 and 8 in the other direction that is y and x now let us check for the slenderness whether it is a long column or short column so in is code plus 25.1.2 you can check for short and slender compression member using this expression that is lex by dx shall be less than 12 to design it as a short column so lex being the effective length along x direction and dx being depth or dimension of that column in particular direction so lex divided by dx this comes as 5.09 which is less than 12 so it is a square column so the ratio will be same in either direction and this comes as 5.09 which is less than 12 so we'll design this as a short column in case of long column we have to consider additional moments and that will be a different process so in case of a long column we have to consider additional moment and that is to be considered in this way i prepared the excel sheet but it will make a different a longer video so i'll be considering that in the next video so we have to consider initial moments so that will be a, a different thing so for now let us stick with this short column only similarly minimum eccentricity 
as per IS456, we have to consider at least minimum 20 mm eccentricity for the design. In case if the eccentricity exceeds the value 20 mm, then that design eccentricity is to be considered. So minimum eccentricity EX minimum. So this is computed as L that is the length of column L divided by 500 plus dimension perpendicular to that divided by 30. So EX being in this direction, so you can see here in the sign convention also EX being in Y direction, so we'll consider DY for computing eccentricity EX. So L by 500 plus DY by 30. Similarly for EY, it will be L by 500 plus DX by 30. So 16 mm which is less than 20 mm. So moment due to eccentricities is equal to PU into EY. So MUX EY moment about X axis is equal to P that is axial load into EX perpendicular distance. Similarly for MUY it will be P into EUX 400 multiplied by 16 mm. So this comes as 8 kN per meter 8 kN per meter. Since the value is less than the moment mx1 and my1 so the design moment will be 68 and 8 kilonewton mux and muy in case of long column we have to consider initial moment as well and as per that the design moment will be considered so being a y axially loaded column it is very difficult to design that is the exact design of column subjected to axial load and biaxial moment is extremely laborious so IS456 allows design of such column considering interaction formula. So firstly we will assume percentage of steel and then we will check for the design considering the interaction formula and check whether the design is sufficient or not. From E tabs we can take the percentage so 1.69 so let me provide this as 1.7 for now gross area being B into D that is the uh, width and depth of the column. So now we have to compute the moment carrying capacity of column. So we will follow SP16 for this. So this comes as 0.13 that is D dash being 60 and DX being 304. So this comes as 0.13. Similarly PT by FCK that is percentage of steel divided by grade of concrete. This comes as 0.09 and axial load capacity PU by FCK BD this comes as 0.22. Now for MU by FCK BD square this is moment carrying capacity and that is ratio this depends upon these values and from graph of SP16 here you can see FI500 D dash by D being 0.15 for now we have 0.13 so the nearest value is 0.15 and equally reinforced that is foresight with equal reinforcement we have PU by FCK BD PT by FCK this curve then we can compute MU by FCK BD square for 0.22 PU by FCK BD and PT by FCK is 0.09 so 0.08 0.1 so this between these two and 0.22 we get this value as 0.14 so MU X1 this is the moment carrying capacity along X direction about X direction so this comes as 79.29 kN meter. Similarly along y axis the ratio will come as same 0.13 PT by FCK 0.09 axial load carrying capacity ratio 0.22 so MU by FCK B square D. So in this case B square D and in this case it is BD square. So this also comes as 0.14 in case if the dimension along X and Y were different we get this value as different accordingly the moment carrying capacity will be different. So for now MUY1 also 79.29 kN meter. Now as per IS456 clause 39.6 member subjected to combine axial load and biaxial bending this condition shall be satisfied. That is the for the exact design of column we have to consider interaction formula. And here the ratio of axial uh, moment design moment divided by moment carrying capacity to the power of a constant alpha which is related to PU by PUZ. PU being the axial load and PUZ being the axial load carrying capacity of the column which depends upon the formula 0.45 FCK AC plus 0.75 FY ASC. AC being the gross area of concrete, ASC being the area of steel.
and the value of alpha ranges from 1 and 2 depending upon the ratio of pu by puz as 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 so we have computed the axial load carrying capacity using this formula pu by puz comes at 0 0.28 ratio of design moment and flexural capacity along one direct x direction is 0 0.86 and along y direction it is 0 0.1 so alpha the value comes as 1.14 for pu by puz being 0 0.28 so this is using interpolation now substitute this value in this equation we get 0 0.91 which is less than 1 so it is okay so if you increase the reinforcement the value of flexural capacity increases in the same way this value will decrease so for now 1.7 this is also okay area is still required so considering 1.7 and gross area this we get the reinforcement required as 1579.35 mm square so for this we can provide uh, 8 numbers of 16 mm bar and that gives total area of steel as 16.1608 mm square and the conclusion is 8 numbers of 16 mm bar and this should be within the range of 0.8 to 6 percent maximum 4 percent but we can also go up to 6 percent but not less than 0.8 percent okay now check for shear that is we'll just consider that design reinforcement from e tabs shear reinforcement is 337.85 number of legs provider will provide two number of legs so size of ties 10 mm so area of shear reinforcement this comes as 2 into pi d square by 4 157.08 mm square the spacing of tie required unit width so 1000 divided by 337.85 into 157.08 so this comes as 464.94 mm the spacing of tie is provided so depending upon the reason that is either is a confinement reason or uh, mid height of the column we can provide 100 or 150 mm as per the ductile detailing so, and the condition this shall not be less than 16 times of the maximum bar provided should be less than 300 mm or least lateral dimension 305 and as per ductile detailing it should be 150 or 100 mm depending upon the reason check for extra ties so number of bar per face so we have provided 8 number of bars so equally spaced so in each face it will be 3 spacing between corner bars so this comes as 205 mm and this is less than 48 times of 5 that is dimension of the stirrup bar diameter spacing between the longitudinal bars each bar so 112 mm which is greater than 75 mm so extra bar is required or extra stirrup is required and this gives the total shear reinforcement as 1570.80 mm square so in this way the designing of the column is done considering manual approach so i hope this video helped you and if it did help do like and comment and share with your friends thank you